the webinar. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Welcome to the course launch webinar, Facing the Future Medicine, uh, Introduction uh, to Longevity Medicine. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, today is a special day because uh, we will coming uh, second national chapter, Indonesia in uh, Longevity Medicine uh, course. Of course, uh, after uh, the, second, uh, the second one, China's uh, course, the original one uh, is in English. Now uh, we will coming uh, Indonesian chapter. Uh, today we have uh, three uh, experts three speakers that will um, uh, talk a lot of, about uh, longevity medicine. And in case if you have any question, uh, put in the chat, then I will read it uh, in the Q&A session uh, later. I think we will start with uh, the first uh, speaker. Okay, uh, our first speaker is Prof. Dr. Rifelin. She is a Swiss board certificate and uh, internal medicine specialist trained in Europe, the US and China in Harvard Medical School affiliated hospitals such as uh, Mass General Hospital, Beth Israel, Dana Farber Institute, Columbia University, Dongji University Hospital in Shanghai and University Hospital of Zurich and Basel in Swiss. Uh, her research focuses in oncology and longevity medicine, artificial intelligence, digital health, precision medicine, biogerontology, and geronto-oncology. She spent a decade uh, practicing medicine, lecturing uh, at medical school, and performing clinical and translational uh, research in New York, Shanghai, and Basel with extensive experience in scientific research and clinical uh, practice at the following highly reputable institution, such as uh, University Hospital of Basel, Food and Cancer Institute and Hospital, Zongshan Hospital, Renji Hospital, and Shanghai East Hospital. Prof. Evelyn has published over uh, 80 per review uh, papers and is a frequent speaker at scientific and medical conference in Asia and Europe. She is also affiliated with the International Center for uh, Multimorbidity and Complexity in Medicine, University of Zurich. She also holds several scientific and advisory board positions at Biotech and Longevity Hub. Okay. Uh, Prof. Evelyn, time is yours now. Thank you so much. So first of all, thank you very much for, um, for organizing this great event and a huge kudos to Dr. Virao, exactly to you for doing something and bringing something that uh, is so tremendously important which is the Indonesian course of longevity medicine and a very, very short introduction also to yourself since I know you will be very humble uh, to do it and um, our speakers and listeners should should be aware of the tremendous um, work that you have been uh, doing in Indonesia as a medical doctor as a part uh, of uh, academia as an affiliate at the university and deeply educated uh, deeply engaged in education of medical students and Biro has been with us with the longevity hub with uh, longevity dot degree team uh, for a while and he has taken upon himself the amazing task to bring longevity medicine course into Indonesia in Indonesian um, and this webinar serves as a introduction as a kickoff as a celebration also of us starting this uh, chapter in Indonesia and uh, I will start now with a short presentation just to give you an overview of our efforts of what we are doing what is um, longevity um, medicine education. Now we'll do that from uh, my other device, uh, if you allow. Just a second, we'll share a screen and show you a few slides. Uh, also, uh, this webinar will be recorded, so you do not have to uh, make notes and uh, screenshots. We will share our 
our data thereafter. Here we go. All right. Can All you right. see? Can you see? Here we go. Can you see my screen and my slides? Yes? Yes, yes. Christine? Yes. Uh... Yes, OK, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, all right. Everybody was kind of muted. All right, so once again, healthy longevity medicine is something that we are very passionate um, about. And we have been starting this journey as a team, and most of us are also clinicians. So for example, myself, I always make this uh, juggle between being an internist and intensive care oncologist, a physician in a university hospital, but at the same time entering this new era of longevity medicine, of data sharing, of um, collecting almost like a digital twin of, um, of somebody or creating this digital twin. and. At the end of the day, what we are also trying to do is to bridge those two worlds, those two parts. And how do we do it? On the one hand, being still strictly in academia, in a, in a setting where we are working, where the sick care is developed and still developing, but at the same time, entering this new turbulent and turbulent era of where um, biomarkers play a much more important role in terms of uh, collecting potential markers that will predict the outcomes and predict the risk of a person developing a disease. And when we are looking at this new field of healthy longevity medicine, indeed we have to say it is a field that is developing so fast that we have to almost run double as fast just to stay in the same place and catch up with the minimal basis uh, of, of the field. But at the same time, it's extremely interesting and extremely valuable to know what is going on because uh, I believe, strongly believe that this is the future of how our uh, healthcare will be shaped in, 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 a, in a relatively short span of time. In about 2021, the beginning of the year, we tried to uh, define the field together with, um, I was really um, honored to, to, to be a part of um, two great authors, um, Dr. Kai Fu Li, who is the godfather of artificial intelligence, and Dr. Alex Javoronkov, who is the founder and the creator of the Longevity Medicals for Physicians, who assembled the team around him and is still leading uh, the education hub and will be presented in several other occasions um, during our talks. Um, and the definition of longevity medicine in that sense was um, a branch of precision medicine that is specifically promoting healthcare, um, health span and lifespan with AI power, with AI technology support. This definition has further evolved. Uh, as we understood that it is very important to bring healthcare professional on board and specifically by our um, domain as to say, we, we targeted physicians, but again, um, we would like to underline that all healthcare professionals are tremendously important and equally important. Um, in terms of longevity physicians, however, there is a publication also pub, uh, published in Lancet Healthy Longevity, where we were talking about the need of a core curriculum structured and aligned and targeted at clinicians that will then implement and, um, and, and further evolve this field. And this is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why we have created this course of longevity medicine for physicians. It was introduction to longevity medicine at that time in early 2020. This has developed to this huge longevity education hub that now has many national chapters, Spanish chapter, Portuguese chapter, Chinese chapter. Um, I believe our next step will be Arabic chapter and this Arabic chapter will pretty much cover all the major languages um, in, in the world. And the introduction course of longevity medicine has been relabeled to longevity medicine 101. 
And we have created a second course, advanced course of longevity medicine for physicians, now called Longevity 201. And I believe the most important point here is both are CME accredited. It does not only mean that it's great for our doctors to finish the course and get a few points for their accreditation, but also it is showing the credibility and the proof and quality of this um, course because CME accreditation is coming from the American Medical Association, AMA, the biggest global CME accreditor. So it is passing a very thorough review of quality so you can be sure that you are learning what is evidence-based, what is important, and uh, and this is ending with a quiz that is actually also helping you to understand how far you know um, did you go in the in the knowledge, and it's giving you a railway of further learning, where to go, uh, what to avoid, and um, what has to be still done. Where can you find the right people, the right network to come on board, and this is why I would of course love to invite everybody on this webinar and whoever will be watching it later to do our courses if you are outside from indonesia and you want to do the course in english please if you are a chinese native we have the course available or the courses actually right now 201 and 101 in chinese our my colleague christine huang will be talking about it and as we mentioned in the beginning our celebration here is you know kudos to dr birao opening the chapter in Indonesia, which we believe, and we will be talking about it, is one of the crucial and core places in the world where medicine is evolving and booming. Physicians are highly educated and striving for innovation, and it is a strategic part uh, of Asia Pacific. Uh, so we are really honored and thrilled to have this part also covered. For all those of you who would like to already learn a bit more and go more into the science and deeper into uh, you know, geroscientific findings um, and the updates in the field, I strictly recommend you to look at the ARDG website where you can also find um, videos from previous uh, conferences where you have basically the, uh, the core speakers and, and superstars in longevity medicine and geroscience and aging and also drug development. And this year, uh, we will also have a conference, the 10th anniversary of the conference, uh, starting with the Longevity Medicine Day for healthcare professionals on 28th of August. So all of those who have taken the course and successfully completed it will have a massive discount, if not a um, um, ticket for free for the conference for the registration. Now, when we are looking at the longevity ecosystem, it's really a great time to live in it. And it is important to learn the right things, not to also to be associated with the right people. So um, there is a healthy longevity medicine society that has been created, just like Society for Internal Medicine in Switzerland or European Federation of Internal Medicine. There was a need of creation of longevity medicine association for healthcare professionals, and it is right there. You can have a look at it. You can apply to be a member. Every application is going through also a filter and, uh, of course, through um, very thorough assessment of the board. But those who are admitted are a welcome member working together on guidelines, recommendations, clinical cases, and, of course, a lot of other things, uh, scientific publications. And uh, we will also have uh, live events. So um, this is... Um, the board of the society, as you can see here, uh, for those of you who follow the publications and a little bit what's going on in the field, will know pretty much all of those people here. They are tremendous superstars, Professor Andrea Meyer and also Dr. Finkus Kirkland. So we have Mayo, Stanford, New York, Singapore, um, China represented in it. But going back from um, what is the official let's say, logistic setting to what longevity medicine is, what are we talking about? We are not talking about functional medicine or prevention, although there are, of course, overlaps and fields are working closely, very, very closely together. I believe what is very distinct for longevity medicine is the implementation of AI and the ongoing learning. So we are constantly learning and translating the finding in the field. However, we are also seeing that with our efforts, with the symbiosis of AI and human intelligence, um, we are creating a digital extension 
of, of our humans by data. Why is this important? Because we can then use a lot of those data from the patient that go beyond the sinker. So besides of labs, besides of diagnostics with radiology, besides of functional testings, besides of all the omics that is actually not being routinely done, including all of the lifestyle and epigenetic influencers, we can use this entire, I would say, mesh, this high dimensional data set, extremely multifocal with learning models of the AI to have an outcome, to ask a question. For example, what is the real biological age of that person? What is the actual target for that person and which medication will or will not be correct? And so we are seeing that longevity medicine is positioning itself next to reactive medicine. We will always, of course, have people who are getting sick and need treatment. So that's reactive medicine. We also have prevention. We've had very good and excellent prevention for a long time. Prevention means early disease detection, but it is an early disease. The disease is already there. Therefore, longevity medicine as AI-driven precision medicine, as a medicine that is targeting, optimizing the health span along the lifespan as per our most recent definition. It, this field is looking at discovering the early risks of a disease. So way before there is any sign of the disease and being caught at all. And so I think the most important slide here, which you can also find in our course is this here. We have a patient journey. We have a life journey. Each of us is uh, suffering from aging. We are being born. We are um, growing up mostly monitored by one doctor's family doctor or pediatrician. And we are always evaluated within some frameworks, within some ranges of reference of values, lab ranges, uh, growing curves, and so on, until we reach the point here called the peak performance, the personal individual peak performance. What does it mean? It means this is the very short, usually, period of time where the person is at, the, at his or her best, now, functionally, biologically, cognitively, the top. And then we decline. And as we decline, we accumulate comorbidities. And as we decline, we accumulate problems that are being usually managed by several, um, by several uh, doctors and who are usually also not even talking to each other. There is a huge dispersion. And also every person is evaluated within some sort of range. And the older a person gets, the more vulnerable are those ranges because we have barely any clinical trials on older and elderly people until we die. Now, how is it different in longevity medicine? What is longevity medicine trying to do? And I do not uh, confirm, of course, that everything is optimal at the moment, but we need more data to optimize it. And so, as you can see, the cure for life is pretty much the same. There might be a little bit of an extension of lifespan, meaning the person might be living a bit longer um, or much longer, significantly longer, but that's not the main point here. The main point is, to make this part here, the lifespan at uh, at least, you know, the last two thirds of life into a great and healthy and optimized health span, meaning we live our lives until the death in good health. And medicine of longevity can help us to estimate not only the biological age of a patient. So for example, if here is the chronological age, the age of our passport, if we don't cheat in our passport, then it's our real age by birth. If this person is, for example, 60, we might measure his biological age at actually, you know, if the person is fit, let's say it's 57. However, the AI can also tell us that the optimal biological age of that person that he or she can achieve is 50. Uh, those are very huge, of course, estimations here. Um, we as doctors can actually guide the person and know which parameters to optimize in order to bring him into that uh, 50 uh, biological age kind of number. And we do that with clinical diagnostics and longevity interventions, which you can also learn in the course. I will not disclose everything because we have a course for it, but you can learn what kind of diagnostics procedures are included in this dimensional setting. What is a polygenetic risk score? How is it different from our current genetics where we are usually just looking for point mutations? What is pharmacogenomics? How can you better optimize the treatment of your patients with the data of pharmacogenomics? 
and what are the monitors and panels and point of care um, measurements that you can apply? What do you track 24 seven? What can you do as a sample liquid, uh, liquid biopsy and so on in order to really know which uh, part of the thing you are measuring right now. Aging is not consistent. Every part of our body from the most granular molecular level to the you know, tissue system organ level, our epigenetic aging is um, not consistent and has a different pace. And therefore also at a different point of times of our lives, our systems are aging or aged differently, right? So clearly ovaries are aging the fastest, right? In women, um, much faster than the liver. So how do we measure that? And which are the output, outputs and biomarkers at the end of that line that can tell us this? And therefore also, how can we really adjust the longevity protocol for a specific patient? So those and other things you can learn in the course. Also, what are the measurement tools? What are the aging clocks? What are the deep aging clocks? co-developed, uh, especially a lot of those clocks have been developed by, by Professor Javaronkov, who is also the creator of the course. And right now we have a lot of those clocks, molecular clocks, um, photo photogenic clocks, blood clocks. In the course, you can also learn how to use them and how to use also a variety of many, many other clocks that we have right now um, in order to assess the patient's chronological versus biological age and to know which parameters you need to modify or can modify for a specific patient in order to bring him down. And how can you also tap on a specific individualized longevity protocol for that patient? Now, of course, we are mentioning um, partially the cerebral health. Uh, it's very important uh, to remember that we are also uh, considering mental health, subjective age, uh, neuropsychiatry and cognition in our courses, um, also presenting of how can we measure our brain age, what are the core markers in terms of NLP or other predictors of a cognitive age, and so on. With this, I open the floor for the questions after. We will have it at the end of the webinar, and thank you very, very much for your attention and passing over to Dr. Birao. Thank you, Professor Lin, for uh, the great explanation. Uh, if you have uh, any question, please uh, write it in the chat room, and I will uh, read it uh, in a Q&A session. Now uh, we move to the uh, second speaker. Wait a minute. Our second speaker is uh, Dr. Christine. Dr. Christine Hang uh, is a Technology Transfer Director of Hong Kong Quantum AI Lab and was selected as one of Forbes China, China uh, 30 under 30. Uh, Dr. Christine has a vast experience in the field of biotechnology and share uh, her professional uh, insight as a biomedicine uh, investment consultant for China uh, Internet Investment. Uh, and she is a consultant um, at uh, In Silico Medicine. She is also a member of advisor board of uh, Wing Wah Charity Foundation Hong Kong and a fellow of the Royal Society of Medicine. Uh, Dr. Christine uh, graduated from the Lee, Lee Ka Sing uh, Faculty of Medicine of the University of Hong Kong and trained in the Neurology Department of Queen Mary Hospital in Hong Kong where she participated in uh, several large-scale international clinical trials. She also a senior research uh, associate at the University of Hong Kong. Dr. Huang is a trans translational uh, medicine expert, especially in the field of AI-driven uh, medicine, neurodegenerative disease, and cancer treatment. She is also uh, the founder Hello? Yes, yeah, something happened. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Christine, time is yours now. Thank you. Thank you very much for Dr. Barra, the, uh, the introduction. And uh, it's my honor to be here and to attend the uh, launch of the Longevity Education Hub uh, and the course in the Indonesia, in, in Indonesia. Previously, as introduced by Dr. Athling, that course very comprehensive 
and have the influence show to uh, global longevity physicians potentially. And we are very happy to uh, now after the Chinese course and uh, we have the uh, Indonesia course. Hello, could you hear me very well? Yes, or, yes uh, okay, okay. Um, just after Dr. Evelyn, thank you very much for your leadership and for sharing your uh, your practice in the longevity medicine to all of us. Um, I prepared a little bit of slides on um, uh, AI, how is AI in, uh, impact in the longevity medicine? Uh, please allow me to share my screen. Okay, wonderful. Hmm. Okay, sorry. So can everyone see my screen while very yes. well? Yes. Okay, yep. wonderful, wonderful. Um thank you very much for um for uh for inviting me to be here on this webinar and um thank you very much for Dr. Bao uh, uh for the bringing bringing the course to Indonesia and I just share like five minutes to ten minutes the impact of AI in longevity medicine um and my focus is gonna be say that is precision geoprotective interventions and the clinical development endpoints. Uh, I believe Dr. Evelyn has been uh, doing this for a while and um the the international health and longevity society uh also working on it very hardly so i just uh give a short brief here so longevity in medicine is very excited data-driven precision medicine and the precision medicine has been a hot topic for a while uh we know that is pre previously the all in chemical drugs um, we took everyone going to be the same protocol, while the longevity medicine going to be the huge influence in the precision medicine as we are developing a diagnosis based on different people. So that includes important five, five parts. First of all, biomarkers of aging and longevity that are going to be used for the predictive and prognostic for these patients, maybe um, subjects, maybe human beings, maybe health, not being a patient yet because we're really focused on um, turning uh, med medical care to from reactive to proactive. And secondly, we need to have a big data, going to be the data-driven individualized pre prevention. Of course, all of this, we need to have the high-end artificial intelligence technology, which uh, Professor Alex Zavronkov is a professor here, uh, an expert here. Um, and also the uh, a lot of team members are doing, are very hard working on it. And where's data from? With artificial intelligence, the measures, we also need the cutting edge research science and therapy diagnosis. We can, we need to put it together, make the, uh, make the data-driven individualized precision medicine ha happen. And at the end, we are going to achieve elite personalized and participatory medicine and personalized science. Mm -hmm. And overall, that is present of the longevity medicine. And as we know, currently we are all medical doctors. There are a lot of clinical markers. And now we can say that is age related change. So here are some important and famous clinical markers of age related changes. So we are more focusing on age related uh, process or maybe age related disease. So we have the clinical markers we also need to understand what is aging biomarkers and aging clocks. That is very important on the practice of the um of our daily work. For 
first of all, about Microsoft Aging, we have the blood-based, um, for the, that is more traditional blood-based diagnostics. We are very familiar with something like fasting insulin or the hemoglobin A1C, that is almost every medical doctor deal with it every day. And um, in the longevity medicine, not only we consider the blood-based markers, also the physical markers very, very important. For, for example, the uh, heart rate variability and blood pressure, we need to see that in a comprehensive way. So besides that, we have already have been widely used the blood-based markers and the physical markers. Now we are more focusing on the AI-driven age predictions. As just mentioned by Professor Evelyn, we we have we are, we we consider aging clock com comprehensive AI driven baked aging clock as our important marker in in the uh, in the practice. For example, we use multi all mixed data, uh, DNA isolation data. Uh, for the omics data, microbiome da data, for the comprehensive analysis, and that is a deep mark, and 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 we can see some publications being uh, published on proof this aging clocks. As mentioned previously, we not only have the pre uh the diagnostics, we also have the uh the interventions. And I want to introduce the geoprotectors. protectors. Uh, we have already developed work. Uh, if you have attended longevity degree, the health, uh, the longevity education hub course, you may notice uh, the presentation of the geoprotectors protectors being listed here. And of course, this is a, a group of scientists work and that is not only the hours and these are uh, some FDA approved uh, mo molecules have the anti-aging effects. And we can also search the drug protectors. I recommend to, uh, to explore it. A lot of information be included in this and it may be useful for um, the clinical practice or maybe clinical trials. So, once we talk about the intervention in aging clock, we will see what is AI-guided personalized longevity medicine practice. And we can see some are drugs, some are not drugs, maybe supplements. So, not only the drugs are important, actually that is not available uh, anti-aging drugs in at this moment, mm -hmm. but we do have some candidates and we also do have um some uh some some nutrition. So not only the treatment including drugs, we also have some other interventions mm -hmm. like uh supplements like nu like nutrition and also like exercise. So what we want to achieve that is maintain our body, our biological age to the best what we can do. So uh, once we're talking about the person, the personalized medical baseline, that is, if we have, uh, if we're talking about the, the, uh, the personalized medicine, I have to say the baseline is super important. We need to know about the, the patients and we need to know about ourselves very well. Then we can give the follow-up suggestions and we can give up and 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 and, and we can give the um the suggestions based on the the uh the personal changes. So the baseline health assessment is super important. And um, after that is the annual follow-up. 
<laughs> okay, so thank you very much for your attention. And we believe with the scientific driven longevity medicine practice, we can have more life we can have more life chapters together. And now I, I'm going to pass the uh the time to uh Dr. Burrell. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Christine. Uh, very comprehensive explanation. Uh, just a uh, remind for uh, participant, if you have a question, jika Bapak Ibu ada pertanyaan, uh, meskipun uh, dalam bahasa Indonesia, silahkan uh, tulis di kolom chat. Uh, nanti saya akan bacakan pada saat uh, sesi tanya jawab. Uh, okay, uh, we will move uh, to the uh, third uh, speaker. Okay, here uh, Dr. Rice Reskiawan, PhD. Uh, Dr. Rice uh, completed his medical doctor degree from University of Hasanuddin, Indonesia, and his PhD from University of Nottingham, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, his PhD focused on uh, developing endothelial progenitor cells as a novel cells, uh, as a novel cell-based therapy and cell-free strategy uh, to repair uh, blood-brain barrier damage following uh, ischemic stroke. During his PhD, he also observed that uh, stem cells undergo substantial decline in function as they age, leading him to explore the underlying mechanism of cellular senescence. His curiosity uh, and passion in aging then drove him to Buck Institute. There, uh, he works on the mechanism of cellular senescence on blood uh, on uh, blood brain barrier induced by a genetic risk factor and late onset of uh, Alzheimer disease. He also a lecturer uh, in the Department of Public Health, University of Hasanuddin, and also doing research in epidemiological uh, aspect of uh, age related disease. All right. Uh, Dr. Rice, uh, the floor is yours for now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for your time for interaction. And also thank you for having me here. So, uh, now, my name is Reis. Uh, I am a postdoc in Bach Institute uh, and also a lecturer in University of Hasanuddin in Indonesia. So actually, Dr. Biro is uh, my senior when we were in was when we were in the medical school. So okay, okay. So I will talk about uh, the importance of biology of aging in Indonesia. So. My talk will focus on biology of aging because it's uh, it's the place that I working on. Okay, so if we look at in this slide, uh, if you can see here that the lifespans over the years or over the uh, centuries has improved significantly. If we live like in in the 17th or 18th century, we may we most likely will be die when we are in 40 years old or when we reach 40 years old. But now we can live like until 17, 70, 80, and even 90 or more than 100 years. So what's going on? What, what was happened? Uh, why our life, lifespan can improve significantly like this? So I do think before 1950, we already improved or we already uh, we don't. We didn't have a massive war or big war, so the number of die before be, because of war reduced significantly, and also we successfully uh, reduced the number of poverty and number of uh, communicable diseases. And after 1950, we improve our economy. There are many uh, middle middle class everywhere, including Indonesia. We have many emerging country become. Uh, become developed countries like South Korea, Japan, and some countries in, in Middle East and also in South America. 
we have better healthcare system in in the UK they have NHS that already established since 1948 in Indonesia we have BPJS established in 2014 so our healthcare system actually improved improved that's why we can reach this kind of uh, lifespan but the the next question is whether we can expand this lifespan into 90, 100, or 120, 150, whatever. So if, if we want to do that, I do think that this kind of stuff, which is uh, better understanding on the biology of aging and also better uh, clinical care, is really important to, to do that. And if we look at the con in the context of Indonesia, in 1950, we only have like 2.2 million of elderly. And 100 years, 2050, the number of elderly double like 30 times. So it's going to be like 60, 60, 65 million. So, and we need to highlight that elderly also associated with some challenges. For example, they are not productive anymore. They are tend to be disabled or frailty. So it's not only a challenge for family, but also it's actually a challenge for, uh, for the country or for the nation. And we need to see this as well, that the speed of aging uh, in Indonesia or Southeast Asia countries really, really fast. If we look at in Australia or New Zealand, they need like, like 60, 60 years to reach an age population, while in Indonesia, we only need like 20, 22, 22 years to reach an age population. So we actually don't have much time to reach or to become age population. So now we have a lot of uh, productive or younger people, and, but we don't have much time to, to, uh, to have this kind of condition. And geriatric medicine in Indonesia is actually not uh, a new thing. Like 1960s, we already have one doctor learning about uh, longevity or the geriatric medicine. In 76, 10, 6, 10, 10 years later, we have First Nations Symposium in uh, geriatric medicine. 1994, we already have uh, three hospital pioneer to serve a geriatric care and 1996, we the, the, the geriatric curriculum already established in in internist resident. So we have a long story of uh, longevity medicine here in, in Indonesia, but I do think the big challenge now is how to utilize or how to establish a nice research both in base, uh, basic science and also in clinical science in clinical science to improve or to empower this geriatric medicine. And the problem is, uh, if we look at the cause of that in Indonesia in 2019, the, 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 the biggest or the main cause of death in Indonesia is actually age-related diseases, stroke, ischemic heart disease, diabetes, that's all are the, the, the age-related disease, diseases. And if you are thinking that tuberculosis, diarrhea, and etc., any communicable diseases, it's not related to age-related diseases. It's actually not, because if we look at this, uh, for example, a COVID, the number of elderly getting COVID is not that much. But if we look at the number of death because of COVID in in elderly, is really really high. So elderly is really vulnerable to uh, to, 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 to that uh, because of communicable diseases. So it doesn't matter actually communicable diseases or non-communicable non diseases, it's always related to age. So why it's matter for Indonesian? So for example, uh, currently there are many very nice evidence actually showing that calorie restriction and exercise this is very, very simple approach that we can, we can do for all Indonesian. And it's already showing 
many evidence showing that it can uh, delay the aging process, it can extend our lifespan and etc. And if we know this, then why we are not uh, uh, determine the policymaker to support this effort because in Indonesia actually we already have a culture of fasting or religious doctrine of fasting and it's related to color, kind of calorie restriction it's just a method of how to adjust our uh, lifestyle for example or, or our policy to, to, to in line with a study of longevity and also we can imagine if we have very nice study or very nice evidence related to longevity, we can dis, uh, prevent disability and also frailty for our elderly. And we can see how much the economy benefits of this, not only for the family, but also for the nation. And the last one is, I think, uh, one of the very important point here is, uh, as Indonesian, we always talk about in 2045, which is 100 years after our independence, we will become as the big for the biggest for the in the biggest for economical country in the world. So we are in the big four in 2045. Why is that? Because we have so many, or we have uh, a young young dominated population. So we have so many young people, but it's only until 2045. After that, we will become an age population, you will reach an age population. And if you can imagine, if we can prevent or delay the process of aging, we have longer golden generation of Indonesia. So I do think it has a huge impact for, for, for the nation. And, excuse me. And this one, uh, actually, actually two conditions of uh, people getting sick, sick. The first one is young people getting sick. Then if young people, young person getting sick, then we will try to find a best medical approach to treat her. But while elderly getting sick, then we will say that's common things or that's natural. It's okay, someone or elderly getting diabetes or stroke or heart diseases because they already age. But it's actually, as a, as, a, as a scientist working in, 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 in aging, it's actually not because we see or we observe that there is something wrong in their body or in their cell of aging people. There is something happen on their body. So that's why we, 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 we kind of propose that aging is a medical condition. It's not something, it's natural. I mean, it's happened to everyone, but there is something pathology, there is something happen to their body or to, to, to their cells that increase their vulnerability to getting sick. This is a sim very simple perspective of aging and cancer and I kind of very like this uh, perspective. If you're smoking, then you will increase your chance to getting uh, cancer by 30%. If you're obesity, you get 33%. If you, got, if you consume alcohol, it increases 10%. So if you do all of them, it will increase your chance to get cancer like 73%. But if you reach 60 years, it will increase your chance to getting, stroke, sorry, to getting cancer by 5,200 percent. I, 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 I don't want to say that you can smoke or you can consume alcohol. It's, it's, it's harmful. But by seeing this, that you can see aging is really correlated with, with age-related diseases. And my PhD actually was in stroke. We tried to develop stem cell as a therapeutic for stroke. And in that time, we were thinking that uh, to, to to reduce the burden of stroke, then we need to prevent people to get diabetes or getting uh, hypertension, getting hypercholesterol because they are the risk factor of stroke. But we didn't realize in that time that 90, 95% of stroke patients is actually age. They actually old. So most mostly the majority of patients with stroke is actually because they just age, they just older. And 
this is this one. I just want to showing you that uh, by doing by using utilizing the technology, we make and do something in 1960-ish. People imagine that someday we may can put the phone on our pocket, but it just takes like 20 years to realize this. Our first computer, like 1940, the, the, you can see it's huge. It's made like my apartment. But now our uh, computer is just like, like, like a laptop or even like a mobile phone. You can put it in the pocket. So why I want to see, I want to say that it's the technology really play. We may can utilize this technology. And I do think in the future, the main focus of the, 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 the development of technology maybe into two things. The first one to our biology or to our body. And then the second one probably into climate change. So I believe that this, this field really, really grow very fast in the future. That one of the reasons actually I moved from probes, stem cells into uh, aging uh, research. And I'm sorry to give you this kind of complex pictures. So it's actually a hallmark of aging or a sign of aging. So in our body, when we get age, there are many things that happen. For example, there's stem cell absorption, there's a telomer, tel telomere shortening, there's a epigenetic alteration, and etc. So actually, all of this happen, or one or two of this happen in our body, and then it will lead to many age-related diseases, for example, stroke, heart disease, Alzheimer, Parkinson, and etc. And when you got that, then you may die, you got disability or frailty or etc. So what we are studying is, or what in our hypothesis is actually, if we can stop this process, if we can, if, if we can make your telomere longer, for example, or we, if we can maintain your genomic or epigenetic condition, we may can prevent all these age related disease and prevent or delay or prevent you to, to die or to, to frailty or disability. So this is actually our main focus. And why it stop? Okay, so and um, it's actually not a fair thing because many studies always showing uh, that that evidence. So uh, my study actually focusing on senescent cells. So senescence is one of the marker of aging, as you can see here. So actually, senescent cells is uh, a state or condition when your cell cannot grow anymore. So it's kind of zombie cells. So they cannot grow anymore. But they are, they cannot die as well. So they still like and they cannot die. But the problem is they are dysfunction. Another problem is the dysfunction and also they release cells. So they release something bad for, for the environment. They release inflammatory mediators, prooxidants, cytokine, and etc. So they damage their uh, neighbor's cells. So this actually problem. And now there is a drug called senolytic drugs. So these senolytic drugs, when actually they work, they, 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 this drug actually removes the senescent cells from our body. And when we use these senolytic drugs to mice or to animals, it actually can prevent or delay uh, Alzheimer. It can maintain your lung. It can prevent you from osteoarthritis. It can prevent you from cardiovascular diseases. And finally, it can expand your life or your lifespan. So we are actually, in the lab, we, it's very easy to accelerate the aging process or to prevent the aging process. And now we are in the point of how to translate all this finding from animal into clinical settings. And this is my last slide. So this is actually our aims in, 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 in <clears throat> uh, longevity. Uh, in the past, people will live like 20, 30 years and then uh, elderly and die. Now, 
oh, we can extend our life into 50, 60 years old, and then we got age-related disease, we got disabled, frailty, and then die. And this is our uh, goals in the future. This is our objective in the future. We want to maintain uh, people lives, people uh, health. So they, they, we want to prevent them to get age-related diseases and then die in the end. So by this point, we may can uh, reduce the number or even eliminate probably, I don't know, any kind of age-related diseases. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. And uh, it's over to you, Dr. Guido. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rais, um, for a comprehensive uh, explanation. Thank you very much again. Uh, and then uh, we are entering a QA session. But uh, before um, I uh, move to the QA session, I will uh, first, uh, I just want to show you um, this is a uh, this is uh, our website. Uh, you can find it on longevity.degree. Uh, and then you can find uh, this course uh, 101 and 201. Uh, 201 is a second uh, course. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, now we have uh, 101. And tomorrow, uh, and Monday, uh, tomorrow, uh, we we launched uh, 201, the second course uh, in Indonesia. Uh, okay, uh, I want to ask permission uh, to speak in uh, Bahasa just to emphasize uh, what I mean in uh, Bahasa. Uh, jadi uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian, uh, ini adalah uh, website uh, untuk uh, belajar uh, kursus uh, longevity medicine. Di sini ada beberapa jenis kursus, uh, ada bahasa Indonesia, yang kedua ada bahasa China, ada bahasa Inggris sebagai bahasa utama. Uh, Bapak Ibu bisa memilih jika lebih nyaman uh, menggunakan bahasa Inggris, silakan uh, mengambil uh, bahasa Inggris. Uh, jika Ibu Bap Bapak Ibu uh, nyaman menggunakan bahasa Indonesia, silakan mengambil bahasa Indonesia. Uh, and um, after that, uh, we will launch another language uh, the next uh, couple of weeks, maybe, I think, uh, Spanish uh, and uh, Portuguese, and also in Arabic and etc. Uh, I uh, tried to translate this uh, since um, September last year, uh, and now uh, February, almost uh, six months. Almost six months, uh, I did work into this. I just uh, want to say, uh, I think this is a, a, a very good um, explanation, a very good uh, comprehensive uh, syllabus, because of when I, I think uh, there is no, uh, in, in Indonesia right now, a syllabus uh, uh, that focus on um, all of the aspect of aging. Uh, some center focus on basic science, some center uh, focus on um, aesthetic. As you know, uh, aging is um, connected with um, uh, aesthetic maybe. Uh, some center focus on um, a hormonal aspect uh, and etc. There is no uh, syllabus that can be used to uh, uh, learn about uh, aging um, in the right field. Uh, then I think uh, this one uh, is good enough. As uh, Dr. Rai said uh, previously, uh, we have we ha we will face uh, uh, aging population in Indonesia, and I think uh, right now we have to prepare uh, because uh, if we uh, don't prepare right now, I think the worst will coming to the next uh, uh, decade. I think. Uh, just see it. Um, now we will move uh, to the Q&A session. Uh, but uh, before I read a uh, question from uh, another participant, 
I will ask uh, you about uh, my own question first. Uh, when I, uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Evelyn, I want to ask um, uh, something. Uh, when I see uh, the registrant uh, before, uh, we uh, coming from uh, various background, not only medical doctor, but also another uh, uh, background such as uh, uh, such as um, uh, laboratory technologies, uh, pharmacies, um, and etc. In, in various uh, background. So uh, what is your, uh, 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 what will you say to them uh, uh, who uh, is not a medical doctor, but also interested uh, in this field? Uh, Jasid, uh, you can answer uh, before I, uh, I read uh, another question. Thank you. Sure, sure. Great. So I think it's very important to underline um, what we sometimes miss out when we say physicians and, you know, um, people from the field. Our goal is really to include um, broad masses of healthcare professionals. And also our courses are here for students, right? So people who have no exposure to the field yet, but want to start to explore it in a credible way. Also for scientists, geroscientists, people from the industry, people from public health, people who are somewhat connected to the field and want to learn more. Um, it's really some, some, somewhat our ideology to educate, educate for free, educate in a credible way. Um, and one does not have to be a internal medicine physician to take the course and, and uh, certify themselves as longevity physicians, right? And um, also, uh, there was a question also that, that was very similar uh, to yours in the, um, in the chat uh, saying, okay, what should the doctor do after completing the advanced course? What else? Yeah, where, where, like, what, what's next? Where can I say I'm a longevity physician? Fortunately, at this point of time, one can't, right? The best you can do is to get the certification for 101 and 201 apply to be a Healthy Longevity Medicine Society member and wait until this field will become a discipline or sub-discipline where you can be very, very officially, um, let's say, trained in, in this field. However, um, this course definitely will give you an opportunity to learn um, what will be the next step in terms of applicable biomarkers and interventions. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for your explanation. Uh, here, there are questions. Uh, I think you have uh, read it um, from Dr. Laurin, Laurina. Uh, Laurina Lau, uh, what do you suggest to be the next step for physician after completing the advanced certification from a professional standpoint? And secondly, for patient management which clock are currently available and available uh, to measure and track? Okay, uh, maybe you can answer. Sorry, who did you ask, Viral? Yeah, uh, here, uh, for patient management, which clock are currently available and reliable to measure and track. Right. So in terms of measurements um, of the clocks, we have several that are already validated, biological aging clocks. This includes blood age. This includes photo age. This includes mind age. There are also clocks uh, focusing on epigenetics and methylation. Yeah, for example, from, um, from um, Pretty much everybody who is using the Horvat clock, epigenetic clock, is considered credible. And there are also further clocks that can be applied where the validation is uh, ongoing, quite good. Um, the, those include glycan age, for example, or brain age. Yeah, so those are the clocks that, um, that are already there. All of 
those that are validated or almost, yeah, we, we will need to have an update on the course, um, are, are listed in the course already. Okay, thank you very much for your explanation. Uh, Bapak Ibu mungkin masih ada yang ingin bertanya uh, dengan bahasa Indonesia sekalipun uh, silakan uh, menuliskan atau ada yang ingin bertanya langsung uh, dipersilahkan uh, jika ada yang ingin bertanya langsung. Oke, okay, saya kira uh, uh, tidak ada lagi yang ingin bertanya. I think uh, there is no uh, question again. And uh, I, th I think um, uh, there are so many uh, registrant before, almost uh, 80 uh, registrant, but uh, now attending this uh, webinar, only uh, half of it. Um, so uh, we will uh, record this and we will um, post it in our uh, website and send them uh, who already register and then uh, they can uh, watch um, in the future okay uh, there is a question from nancy i'm a doctor and patient usually ask me what is the best advice to prevent aging what is the best answer please Okay, maybe anyone can answer this? Maybe Rais, Dr. Rais, maybe you wanna take it? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it's been a while for me actually not practicing medicine. <laughs> But uh, as far as I know, there are a few things that have very nice evidence that can prevent aging. The first one is, as I mentioned before, uh, exercise. So don't watch too much Netflix <laughs> or don't play, don't open your phone too much. Uh, you need to do some things. You need to do exercise. That's the first one. And then the second one is uh, calorie restriction. So don't eat too much as well. Um, uh, in animal settings, even if we reduce the amount of the calorie like 15 or 20%, it actually, it's already give a good effect. So reduce 20% is enough in animals. So try to reduce your, your consumption or your food and try to add more like vegetable and uh, fruit because it's also showing that it have good effect. And then I think the last one, is be happy <laughs> don't stress yourself so because uh, now i'm i'm focusing on brain or alzheimer parkinson something like that and it seems that stress really correlates with this kind of disease so i think that's all don't eat too much move move you need to move and don't stress <laughs> yeah so i guess it's a uh, um It's, it's a complex thing, right? There is no one thing that a person can do to prevent aging. Uh, first of all, it's preventing accelerated aging. So preventing the aging process to, to be fast or too fast. And second of all, it's a complex um, amount of measurements and um, interventions. Dr. Rice presented the hallmarks of aging. It's You know, we are just tapping on all of them, and by far we know that they, you know, they're expanding. We know that we are by far not complete yet. So, um, what to what to do? Um, join a very good longevity physician, a physician that is really on at top of the game in terms of uh, what's new in the field, and implement the lifestyle interventions that Dr. Rice already also mentioned with tracking of data. So, again, we are here not only to promote what everybody already know is good to exercise and sleep and food. It's track, individualize, collect the data, optimize it. Um, so that based on those biomarkers, it will be possible to know if this is actually benefiting your biological age or not. And uh, for the mentality of the prevention is already good enough. For, first of all, we have the patients, if the patients have the mentality to prevent aging and um, not like 
after a wrinkle happens or after the age-related age disease happened, we think about the treatment. That is already a good move, a good start. How can we get access to validated clocks for use? Um, you can, so for those that I just mentioned, right? And uh, they are all publicly available, of course, uh, you know, in, term, in terms of companies and platforms. But when you go to the websites of those uh, of those uh, aging clocks that are validated, that that are listed even in our course, you can then um, you can then order them there or or talk to the to the providers on how to use them. For example, for the biological blood age, you do not have to um, do anything but only to order a specific um, uh, protocol of of blood biomarkers, which are available pretty much everywhere. And uh, then to use it through through the algorithm, right? In terms of uh, glycan uh, age, for example, then you need a dry blood sample. So each of those clocks will have some different demands. There are some that are very simple, and but all, bottom line, right now there is no like a centralized clinical platform where, where all of them are on. They are still dispersed by and provided by the companies. All right, thank you. Uh, before I uh, I answer, uh, ah, there are uh, some questions about um, how to uh, join the course. I will explain uh, in Indonesia, please, uh, using uh, Indonesia, just a moment. Oke, okay, uh, Bapak Ibu, uh, ada pertanyaan terkait dengan bagaimana mengikuti uh, kursus uh, Longevity Medicine. Uh, kursusnya bisa diakses di website uh, longevity.degree. Nah, ini kalau sudah 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 masuk seperti ini ya. Uh, jadi uh, http uh, www.longevity.degree. Nah, Oke, okay, uh, saya coba sini ya. Uh. Oke, okay. kalau sudah masuk di halaman website ini, uh, Bapak Ibu akan uh, lihat ada bagian di atas, chapter yang di atas ada login, sign up, uh, sign up uh, lebih terlebih dahulu. Setelah sign up, Bapak Ibu uh, bisa saya sign up ya. Nah, setelah Bapak Ibu sign up di halaman ini ada beberapa jenis kursus, ada yang bahasa Inggris, bahasa Indonesia, kemudian ada yang bahasa Cina. Bapak Ibu sisa pilih di feature course, di sini ada bahasa Indonesia ya. Ada bahasa Indonesia yang ini Bapak Ibu silakan pilih penggunaan bahasa Indonesia. Nah, kenapa setelah Masuk di bahasa Indonesia, Bapak Ibu bisa uh, melanjutkan untuk memulai kursus, uh, menyelesaikan materi-materinya. Uh, uh, ini setelah selesai materi akan ada uh, evaluasi, uh, menjawab beberapa pertanyaan. Setelah itu uh, maka uh, sudah selesai. Nanti uh, terkait dengan sertifikat akan dikirimkan via uh, via email yang Bapak Ibu daftarkan. Ini adalah kursus yang pertama, kemudian eh, kursus yang kedua, eh, kursus lanjutan Longevity Medicine eh, 201, eh, Advanced Course, eh, itu available besok, besok ya hari Senin. 
Kemudian kursusnya bisa diikuti kapan saja, tidak terbatas waktu. Silakan Bapak Ibu selesaikan sesuai dengan kemampuan waktu masing-masing. Then Jasid, I think satu lagi. Uh, kemarin sempat ada kenapa uh, kecenderungannya untuk menggunakan bahasa Indonesia juga saya uh, ngotot untuk masukan uh, saya minta untuk uh, kita buat untuk uh, dalam bahasa Indonesia karena beberapa uh, kolega yang saya sampaikan untuk mengikuti kursus ini uh, beberapa uh, ada yang menjawab uh, Bahasa Indonesia saja kadang kita agak sulit untuk memahami, apalagi yang bahasa Inggris uh, seperti itu. Uh, so uh, I think uh, wherever you want uh, bahasa uh, Inggris or uh, in bahasa Indonesia, uh, you can you can join uh, whatever you want. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, is there any another question? If there is no uh, question, then we will uh, end this session, I think. But before, okay. Thank you so so much for everyone for attending. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for thank everyone's you. effort on longevity medical course. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Before, before we uh, leave this pick, I think uh, we can take a. Okay. Uh, Dr. Laura, can you take a screenshot for us? Yes, I already did. Okay. Wonderful. You 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 can uh, guide us. Let's make another one, Laura. Say one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, you. Thank you very Great. much once again. Best wishes to longevity medical course in Indonesia. Indonesia. Great. Indonesia. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. If in the biology, I can... Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye